Meet Anna. Her surname is Log. She enjoys making somersaults clockwise. Anna enjoys drinking tea, especially to pour it from a vintage teapot. It is way past her bedtime, but she managed to pour the tea into the cup. Steaming hot tea drops from the spout right to the teacup. This is for you to remember that we are learning about analog time. There are two spellings for analog time. You can choose which one you want to use. For the video purposes, I'm using the one without the U sound at the end. Anna Log has two arms. So does a clock. An hour arm and a minute arm. We'll look at it in detail. Here is the vintage teapot. We're going to divide the teapot and the clock into halves. Everything on this side is past and everything on this side is two. Analog takes the teapot past her bedtime. But sometimes she prefers to move to the other side. When she pours the tea from the teapot to the cup, I'll show you. Do you know how many hours there are in one day? 24 hours in one day. But why does this analog clock only go up to 12 hours? Strange. It's actually very simple. The clock moves around twice in one day. The hour arm moves one time around until midday. That is a.m. after midnight. Then the hour arm starts moving again. Past midday p.m. The hour arm is the shorter one and the minutes arm is the longer one. Sometimes there is a third arm, the seconds arm. We're not going to look at that one in detail. Just be aware of it. Do you remember Luigi and his pizza cafe? He had to divide the pizza between all the friends that came to visit him in his pizza cafe. Follow the link and have a look at Luigi's Pizza Fractions. This pizza gets divided into a couple of pieces. So does a clock. Let me explain. We divide the pizza into halves. 
then we divide the pizza into quarters. If there are 10 friends who visit Luigi at his pizza cafe, he has to divide the pizza into 10 equal parts. Each piece indicates 5 minutes. So, there are 60 minutes in a clock when the arm goes right around in a full circle. That's when we count in fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, or an hour. Do you remember that I've told you that a clock has a short arm and a long arm? The short arm indicates the hours. That short arm moves a bit slowly. It moves only one pizza slice in one hour. The longer arm moves a bit faster. Think of an athlete with long legs. He moves a lot faster. The long arm moves right around the clock in one hour. Do you remember Anna? Log? Now this is analog time. Anna loves to drink tea from a vintage teapot past her bedtime. So everything on this side is past. And everything on this side is to. She pours the tea from the spout to the cup. You can also remember it by singing this song. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle and here's my spout. When I see the teacups, hear me shout. Tip me over, pour me out. Tip me over, pour me out. Let's play a quick game to help you remember past and to. You know Analog's vintage teapot? She loves to drink tea past her bedtime. She pours it from the spout to the teacup. This is a fun way to remember past and to. Stand right in front of the clock with your arms in the air. Move your right arm from the top right around to your middle and shout past. Stand up straight with your arms in the air. Now move your left arm from the top right round to your middle and shout two. Now you've experienced past and two with your body. Past. And two. Let's 
let's exercise it a little bit more. Let's have a look at hours. When we write it down, we write down O clock. For example, one O clock. The short arm indicates hours. The long arm points to the twelve. A full hour. There are twenty-four hours in one day. So the short arm goes around the clock twice in one day. The first time when the short arm goes around it is a.m. after midnight. That is everything that happens from midnight until the middle of the day. We're going to use a sun to represent that. When the short arm reaches the 12 midday, it changes into PM past midday. A moon is going to represent PM. To use the sun and the moon is only a quick way to help you remember AM and PM. The moon is definitely not shining at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day. Let's start at AM. We'll go through all the hours. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Let's have a look at PM, past midday. We're going to use the moon to represent PM. You are going to help me tell the time. Are you ready? Four o'clock, correct. One o'clock, clever. Eight o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Six o'clock. You are getting very clever at reading the hours. Let's make it a little bit more difficult. We'll try reading the minutes. Are you ready? I know you are. We're going to look at minutes. The long arm indicates minutes. The short arm indicates hours. The long arm is very fast. It goes all the way around in an hour. The short arm only moves one slice. We're going to have a look at 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. We could have taken any other hour, but this is to make the explanation as easy as possible. Do you remember the pizza? We divided it into halves. We 
going to divide the clock in halves from the top from 12 o'clock right to the bottom 6 o'clock so if the long arm points to the top to the 12 then it indicates a whole hour and if the long arm points to the six then it indicates half we also divided the pizza into quarters start at the nine and go right through to the three now you have quarters When the long arm points to the three, then it is quarter past, 15 minutes past the hour. And if the long arm points to the nine, then it is quarter to, 15 minutes before the next hour. Do you remember that 60 minutes is one hour? One part equals five minutes. Start at the 12 and count in intervals of five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, or oh, zero minutes, the place where we start. A full hour. We can repeat the whole time that it is past a certain hour. For example, if the long arm points to 8, we can say that it is 40 minutes past 3. But the clever way is to say past and 2. You experienced it with your body. If you stand in front of the clock and you move your right arm to your middle, then it is past a certain hour. And if you stand in front of the clock and move your arm to the left, then it is to a certain hour. So, when it is to a certain hour, you have to count backwards in fives. Sounds a bit confusing, but I'll explain it to you in detail. Let's have a look at everything past three o'clock. Five past three. Ten past three. Fifteen minutes past it is also quarter past three. Look at the position of the short arm. It moves a tiny bit within five minutes. Can you see that? Twenty past three. Twenty-five past three o'clock. 30 minutes past 3. It is half past 3. We say half past 3 because it is halfway in between the 3 and the 4 on its way clockwise to the 4. Half past 3. Now we're going to focus on 
two. We're going to count backwards in fives. When the long arm points to the seven, you count all the way backwards in fives from twelve. <laughs> the zero minutes. Start at the twelve. At the zero. Zero minutes. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Then I say two. Look at the nearest clockwise number. We will look at four because we're looking at the part in between three and four o'clock. Twenty-five, two, four. My long arm points to the eight. Count backwards from twelve in fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, two, four. The long arm points to the nine. Look at the short arm. It is three quarters away from the three. And a quarter still to go until four o'clock. It moves very slowly. Can you see that? Let's count backwards in fives from sixty or zero minutes. Five, ten, fifteen. You can also say quarter to. Four. Fifteen minutes to four o'clock. The long arm points to the ten. Let's count backwards in fives. Five. Ten. Ten to four. Now the long arm points to eleven. This is easy. You can only count five. Then you know it is five to four. The long arm points to the twelve. That indicates a whole hour. And the short arm points directly to the four. It is four o'clock. I hope you understand it a little bit more. To understand AM and PM, it is very easy. Up until 12 o'clock midday, it is AM, and you work it out in exactly the same way. Starting again at 12 o'clock midday, it is PM. Past midday, very easy. You can also exercise your time by doing worksheets, but the best way is to do it practical. Keep your watch on your arm and read the time. You are going to master analog time in no time. Just exercise regularly and you will get better by the minute. Well done. I hope you enjoyed this.